3D Plus 4 is probably the best bad printer there is. It has an impressive set of features for a surprisingly low price, so it does look like an attractive choice. Especially if you check the reviews for most high-profile YouTubers who probably have a monetary interest or a manufacturer relationship to show the printer in a dishonestly good light. But if you follow Chidi's Reddit groups, talk to more owners or watch my review, you learn that the truth is quite a bit darker than that. Of course, you do need to consider that many people join these groups only because they have issues. But even so, the Plus 4 clearly has a much higher failure percent than, for example, any Bamboo model. Unfortunately, Bamboo got totally lost with them wanting to own your workflow and even a slice of your printer that you thought were your own. Besides, they don't even offer a printer with the Plus 4's features, except for the one costing three times the price. <laughs> I made a review on the Plus 4 a while back which showed the sad start I had with this machine, without sugarcoating anything. But I finally got mine working great, so I feel that every Plus 4 owner should know about these tips and fixes. So here we are. This is a long video, since I go through every issue and solution in their entirety. So you can use the chapter links in the video description. All the links can be found there as well. And all solutions I offer are free. Then, why am I qualified to make a video like this? First, I've been a tinkerer all my life, so I've learned what kind of improvements are useful and purposeful. Secondly, I've studied my own Plus 4 for months already, and I've tried and used these improvements myself. Third, I've been active on the GD Reddit channel, and I've teamed up with a fellow technically inclined user slash victim to find the best possible solutions for some of these issues. The common issues that can be solved beforehand are destroyed build plates, repeatedly broken 15 to 60 dollar nozzles, repeating clogs, bad print quality, significantly wrong chamber temperatures, and so on. So these are no joke. Do consider though that every change you make to the printer configuration or mechanics may void your warranty. That said, a malfunctioning printer is of no use, and returns with GD can be quite a hassle, to put it kindly. So fixing the issues yourself is your best bet, and probably takes the least effort. I'll categorize the sections to absolutely necessary, important, and nice to have. We'll start with the absolutely necessary improvements and fixes. Part 1. Z-Offset Issues This is the biggest cause of drama with the Plus 4. In short, the mechanism that measures the Z-Offset in the beginning of every print doesn't work well, or at all, especially at higher chamber or bed temperatures. And if it fails to read the correct offset, the nozzle can dig into the print bed and ruin it completely from the very first line it tries to print or it can try to start the print a full 1mm on top of the build plate. If you get these errors, you can reach out to the GD customer support, and they'll probably send you a new piezo sensors and their circuit boards, although it's questionable if they will solve anything. They didn't for me. So, why does this happen? Nobody is quite sure why. The GD Plus 4 measures the Z offset by pushing the bed against the nozzle, and registering the pressure by the piezo sensors under the bed. A common suspect is that something in the print chamber doesn't tolerate heat, so the sensor readings can fluctuate, resulting in a bad reading. A common suspect are the piezo sensors themselves, although I measured their temperatures after one hour long print with a 110 Celsius bed and 60 degrees Celsius chamber and the piezo sensors themselves were the coolest part in the whole chamber. So they warm up very slowly due to the brackets working as heat brakes and the foam pad as an insulation. Also, even the cheapest piezos should be perfectly usable up to 80 degrees. So I personally believe that the reason is something else. Possibly the piezo driver circuit boards 
the glue that attaches the piezos to their brackets, or even the measurement electronics in the tool head. We just don't know. I can't talk about the issue without mentioning cartographer and beacon. They are devices and sensors to measure the Z offset instead of the stock piezos. The cartographer is much cheaper of the two, but it doesn't tolerate heat all that well either. So while even the beacon might not be the best for very high temperature prints, in my opinion it's the better choice. Although I did hear about an incident where even the beacon didn't solve the Z offset issues. What did solve the issue for him and for me for both hot and cool prints was a combination of the printer.cfg and startup process modifications. So this is what I recommend everyone to do with their plus four. First, install the chamber temp measurement mod, then install the screws tilt calculate mod, then run screws tilt calculate to manually trim the bed, then monitor the Z offset measurement at the start of every print and cancel the print if it has to retry probing the bed even once. Optionally, what you can do is insert the command G32 as its own line in the slicer's machine startup G code, then heat the bed to 70 or 80 degrees Celsius and let it soak for 10 minutes or so. With the chamber heater off, and might be a good idea to keep the door and roof open for this. Then run auto bed leveling from the printer's screen and confirm that the probed values are all between minus 0.3 and plus 0.3 millimeters. What this will do is it will measure the chamber temperature from two different sources at the same time to get a much more precise reading as the original system lets the chamber get much too hot then it will create a bed mesh when the bed is hot. Then it will use the same mesh for every print and it doesn't rebuild the mesh at the start of every print because of the G32 command. So the startup is much much faster this way. So even if you use a hot chamber later on, it still uses the same mesh that it successfully made with a warm bed and a cool chamber. Using the same mesh for bed temperatures between like 55 and 110 should make it less precise in theory, but this is still the best solution that I have found, and I have had zero problems doing so. Still, it is a bit of a hack to an issue that doesn't have a proper solution just yet, and you still might have to cool down the printer between prints to get a proper Z offset reading. I made a series of macros for the plus four that include a fast startup sequence utilizing the method above, among others. Then another common issue with the plus four is a broken, cracked or bent 15 to $60 nozzle. This is caused by the nozzle cleanup mechanism and the whole rear wall of the print chamber being built with much too large tolerances. The nozzle can grab into the poop chute scraper or the cooling PEI plate and the stepper motors are easily strong enough to crack and bend the nozzle that may already be tensioned by a misalignment in the hot end. Since the reason can be either the scraper or the PEI sheet, the solution has a few approaches as well. First, slant the PEI sheet bracket edge by scraping it with a knife, file or sandpaper. Then move the tool head by hand to get the nozzle to the PEI sheet from the left. If the nozzle still grabs onto the PEI plate, lower the PEI sheet bracket by removing the PEI sheet itself and tightening the leftmost screw underneath. Then check the vertical play of the scraper when it's extended fully. If the scraper can grab onto the nozzle too much, either bend the scraper down a bit, install a shim, or for hardcore users, sand down the underside of the scraper bracket. Although there's a shallow pool below the scraper, so sanding down the bracket will only tighten the front end and the scraper will still act as a seesaw. So I'd try the shim first. Then install at least the safe Y of my macros. 
This will get the nozzle across the scraper gracefully and with very low power during homing and filament change. The print start fast and clear nozzle fast macros will also slow down the speed it goes across the scraper and on the PEI sheet when starting a print. Number 3. Logs. And this is an easy one. The hot end cooling fan doesn't blow directly at the hot end heat sink, so the heat brake may fail to do its job properly, causing clogs. PLA should always be printed with the top glass open with a bracket or removed, but still an actual solution is to print a shroud that directs the airflow directly to the heatsink. Print, install, done. Never have to worry about it later. Then overheating stepper drivers. This is also an easy one. The mainboard fan is very ineffective and doesn't create enough airflow at the elements of the mainboard that heat up. Some users purchase a larger fan, although it still doesn't point the airflow to where it's needed the most. I made a duct for the stock fan, which already lowers the temperatures by a constant 21 degrees. There are of course ducts for the bigger fans as well. Important improvements. Bad print quality. Not everyone has this issue, but I did for a full month when I got my plus four. The X rod or its linear bearing seemed to be sticky from the factory already, disturbing the tool head movements. I solved mine by generously lubricating the X rod with sewing machine oil as it needs to be a very light oil. Moving the tool head back and forth by hand, wiping the black build up and repeating the process until no more black came out. This simple trick improved the print quality on my unit significantly. Now, several people have started to argue with me that a linear bearing with a graphite sleeve shouldn't be lubricated at all. But doing so caused a bad print quality on my unit right from the start, so it's not an option. In addition, Quiddy themselves remind you with a big sticker in the print chamber that the X rod needs to be lubricated regularly. So I don't really care if someone wants to argue with me against the lubrication, and you shouldn't either. Slow chamber heater. The chamber heaters in these units have huge tolerances, unit to unit, and the power ratio value that they need to get to the advertised 400 watts varies significantly. GD played it safe and left the value quite low, and therefore many units suffer from very long heat up times, and some may even never reach the requested temperature. But you absolutely need to use a power consumption meter or a smart plug to increase the power ratio. I show the process in detail in one of my videos, and it goes like this. Set up a power consumption meter or a smart plug and watch the wattage that the printer consumes. Heat up the bed to 80 degrees and let it even out for a minute. Take note of the power consumption, it's probably around 130 watts. Then start heating up the chamber up to 50 degrees. Take note of the total power consumption when the chamber is around 40 degrees. Then deduct the first value from the ladder and you got yourself the power the chamber heater draws. If it is significantly under 400 watts, open up printer.cfg from the slicers device tabs configuration section. Search for heater generic chamber and increase the max power value. Note that a power rate increase from 0.4 to 0.5 increased the wattage on mine from 280 watts to 400 watts. So do advance carefully. Disappearing Z-Rod Grommets. Somehow the plastic lead screw grommets in the bed frame can crumble into small pieces and leave the bearing exposed. I made a replacement grommet that you can print out of TPU. Problem solved. Nice to have improvements. 
misaligned hot end. This maybe should be a part of the earlier broken nozzle section, but since this hasn't caused issues on mine, I can't really consider it as a must-have fix. The issue is that the hot end the nozzle screws into is misaligned and causes the nozzle to be at a tension or even slightly bent at all times. This makes it easier to crack the included ceramic heat break, which again can cost $30 for a pack of two or $60 if you use the expensive one. Unless it happens unsupervised when it can ruin your whole hot end or even the whole tool head. My pal James Steven 44 found a method to align the hot end properly, which should make cracking the ceramic heat break a much less probable event. Roof bracket. Different filaments require different chamber temperatures and air circulations. So a bracket to hold the roof open a bit is very useful. I made a demonstration video of the bracket that I designed. Camera view angle. The camera is positioned so high that the tool head blocks the view to the actual print. I made a bracket that's positioned lower for a better viewing angle. It crashes with the stock tool head cover though, so you need to print my light tool head front cover as well. And why not the back cover as well, since you are at it. And I think they're cool. I might have forgotten some of the cool mods going around, but this list should definitely keep you safe from lots of print failures repair costs, and of course wasting even more time and effort. So, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.